Um, the, well, the biggest problem is flow assurance, I'd say, the, at least the biggest problem that we play a role in. So the biggest problem in the fluid mechanics world. There are, of course, many, many problems um, um, to be faced, but uh, typically you're pumping, um, uh, one of my favorite uh, uh, descriptions is that really an oil producer is really a water producer that has a byproduct of oil. Um, so typically you might be pumping um, 50 parts uh, per 100 water and 50 parts per 100 oil. Um, or maybe some of it will be gas as well. So you're typically dealing with a three-phase material. So you've got gas, methane, uh, materials like that, uh, oil, which is turn, trying to turn into a solid at seawater temperature, and water. Um, and you've got to try and figure out how to convey that, typically over maybe a pipeline that's 30 kilometers in, in length. Um, it's going from a few kilometers underground back up to the surface. Uh, and of course, if something goes wrong, you have uh, very limited opportunities to turn the thing off. So, uh, so that is all pulled together under what people call flow assurance. And uh, less through industrial liaison program, but more through the MIT Energy Initiative, many of the top uh, um, oil and gas companies are part of the MIT Energy Initiative. And so we've interacted with a lot of uh, companies through that. Um, the three biggest pollutants or the three biggest challenges I'd say are hydrates. So these are gas hydrates. Um, interesting thing there is that um, the solubility of methane in water is very, very low. The solubility of methane in ice is extremely high. So, so you can produce an ice that, for example, an ice cube that I could set fire to and you could sit here and you could actually watch it burn. Um, on one side, that's a huge problem, as you might imagine. So in the Macondo uh, uh, well issue in the Gulf of Mexico, for example, that was a big problem, was formation of gas hydrates. Um, on the other hand, it could be a huge energy source. So um, off the coast of Japan, there are vast resources of gas hydrates um, that if you can dig them up, they'll come up as ice cubes and you can literally uh, um, burn them. So, uh, so there's a potential energy source there if you can figure out how to uh, bring them to the surface and, and handle them. So, so hydrates is one, waxes is another. And as I said, that's where it connects to skin cream. Um, and uh, wax deposits look just like cholesterol deposits in your arteries. They clog the, the throughput of a pipe. And so uh, trying to understand that is another issue. Um, and then finally, asphaltines are a third uh, kind of pollutant. And all three of them are non-Newtonian fluids. And so they're things that we've got interested in in the lab over many years. The other part of that that's important is the surface is important. So. Uh, in addition to fluid mechanics, we also do a lot of surface engineering and trying to control properties of surfaces. Yeah, um, fantastic example is to think about friction on surfaces. If you've ever touched a, a dolphin um, or a shark, um, and they feel, well, first of all, they secrete a, a polymer in, their, uh, in, in the coating uh, in the surface, which is slippery to us. Um, it's a high molecular weight polymer. Um, it slowly dissolves in seawater and it modifies the flow around uh, the dolphin or the shark. So, um, so that's one area. Um, a shark, uh, on the other hand, isn't so much slippery and slimy like a dolphin. It, it feels slightly rough and it turns out that the shark is textured on its surface. So its, uh, um, its skin or what's called its denticles have microscopic grooves on it. Um, and at least on fast swimming sharks, that again changes the friction relationship or it changes how much power I have to put in to swim at a certain speed. So you can imagine that if I want to reduce friction on an unmanned underwater drone or something that has a battery pack that will only last for so long, you might like to reduce the friction as much as possible. So by patterning surfaces, we can change the drag uh, relationship by 10%, 20%, maybe even 30%. Um, that doesn't seem like a lot, but, um, but when you work out that about 60% of the uh, energy consumption of a large uh, vessel in the, in the ocean is, is just overcoming frictional drag, uh, you realize that, that you know, a little bit can go a long way. But, um, and uh, a third component of that is flexibility. So, so flexibility of surfaces. You know, whereas we tend to make rigid steel surfaces that um, essentially have this classical boundary condition that's called the no-slip boundary condition, that water sticks to a solid surface. That's why when I spill water on my desk here, um, it'll, it'll sit here. Even if I bring the desk up, it'll eventually run off, but it leaves a surface film behind. But you might imagine that if I change the texture of the surface, maybe I can change that boundary condition.